Yet, you all come to us young people for hope. How dare you? You have stolen my dreams and my childhood with your empty words. And yet, I'm one of the lucky ones. People are suffering. People are dying. Entire ecosystems are collapsing. We are in the beginning of a mass extinction. And all you can talk about is money and fairy tales of eternal economic growth. How dare you? Greetings, concerned citizens of this radioactive world. I'm coming to you with a very, very important video. I don't say that too often. But here is a young woman, still considered a girl by many standards, and YouTube, under their new child labor laws, have made posting a real picture of people under 18 an offense that can get your channel banned. So I will not be putting any real pictures of Greta Thunberg on this video. I respect for her, YouTube's policies, and me not getting my channel kicked the F out of here. This is very important, Greta Thunberg, a young woman who has galvanized the world. Many young people look up to her, many parents, many concerned citizens that they really care, true environmentalists, and they get sucked up into the climate change narrative. She may have really good intentions, Greta Thunberg, but maybe people aren't telling her the whole scoop, and I don't expect her to have figured out everything. She's 17 years old. She's been diagnosed with Asperger's. It's kind of like a form of autism, a highly functioning autism. And she says it's her superpower. Now, all power to her. That's great. If she looks at it as her superpower and she can use it to benefit. I know some people are more intelligent and they can use it in different ways, their autism. I've had people say... That my son is has a gift of autism and it really pisses me off because it's not a gift you really risk on any child to have. You would love to see them be normal and not have emotional outbursts. So it's kind of a slap in the face when I hear people call my kid who is autistic a gift. I don't look at it as a gift. I look at it as an unfortunate event that happened to my son that took away his normalcy. This video is really intended for younger people. To reach out to them because they're going to be the ones that are going to be have the mess that's left over from the baby boomers, from Generation X. I'm sorry what we've done to your planet, to the young people. This huge mess that you've inherited. For more than 30 years, the science has been crystal clear. How dare you continue to look away and come here saying that you're doing enough when the politics and solutions needed are still nowhere in sight. You say you hear us and that you understand the urgency. But no matter how sad and angry I am, I do not want to believe that. Because if you really understood the situation and still kept on failing to act, then you would be evil and that I refuse to believe. The popular idea of cutting our emissions in half in 10 years only gives us a 50% chance of staying below 1.5 degrees and the risk of setting off irreversible chain reactions beyond human control. 50% may be acceptable to you, but those numbers do not include tipping points, most feedback loops, additional warming hidden by toxic air pollution or the aspects of equity and climate justice. They also rely on my generation sucking hundreds of billions of tons of your CO2 out of the air with technologies that barely exist. And you are still not mature enough to tell it like it is. You are failing us. But the young people are starting to understand your betrayal. The eyes of all future generations are upon you. And if you choose to fail us, I say we will never forgive you. We, 
We will not let you get away with this. Right here, right now, is where we draw the line. The world is waking up. And change is coming, whether you like it or not. Thank you. She's really so worried about CO2. She says, we got to trust the scientists. Listen to the scientists. So they're so concerned about the CO2 that they've pretty much been pushing nuclear to accomplish their CO2 goals. And there's no hiding this. So that's why people might say, why are you being so critical of Greta Thunberg? It's because her actions are directly going to be affecting whether more nuclear power plants are going to be put in this world or not. And I found this very interesting because when I was going through Greta Thunberg's Wikipedia, it was 2011 when she realized the dramatic events that are happening around the world and how the environment was declining. What happened in 2011? 99% of my subscribers know what happened in 2011 was the Fukushima meltdowns, 311 of 2011. That changed everything. We started seeing massive die-offs almost immediately and the radiation spurred Germany which she's being hard on Germany Germany changed their minds one of the few great things that Germany has done is decided to shut down all their nuclear power plants because after they saw Fukushima they're like no way we can't take a chance like this I mean Greta is the child of Chernobyl she's out of Sweden she was born in Stockholm and I wonder is it Stockholm syndrome I think she's misinformed and I think she's being used and I don't think she knows all the facts. Over the past year, climate activist Greta Thunberg was hailed by UN bureaucracy and its Extinction Rebellion minions and other column derided by critics of the global warming agenda. Viscreal reactions to the Swedish teenager, diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome, has been canonized with her appointment as Time Magazine's youngest ever person of the year. On that list of luminaries, little Greta joins Joseph Stalin, General William Westmoreland, Bill Jefferson Clinton, Jeff Bezos, George freaking W. Bush, and Adolf Hitler. That's some nice company, huh? Greta's guilt tripping of airplane passengers with her multi-million dollar carbon fiber yacht journeys across the Atlantic, arriving in just 10 days without switching on the motor, really? To New York Harbor in record time against the Gulf Stream and prevailing wind, beating trade winds assisted by Christopher Columbus by three weeks. This was annoying enough to anyone who still has a grip on reality. Even more surreal was how the world's elected politicians and UN representatives listens with rapt adoration during her categorical rejection of adults as liars and cheaters, when everyone already knows that. That's how logic dies, with thunderous applause from gullible fools. All you good fellows of sound mind that still harbor this sneaking suspicion that Miss Thornburg is a useful for some nefarious special interest group, a sock puppet, parade on the world stage by her family members, all actors on a payroll and a stooge of secretive power brokers who manipulate her Pinocchio strings. But doesn't that sound like another paranoid conspiracy theory? So here's the wasabi. My misgivings about her children's crusade go far back to 1997 at the Kyoto Summit against carbon dioxide emissions when I was involved in public relations media for the conference of the two main sponsors, the electric car producer Toyota and the Tokyo Electric Power Company, TEPCO, which provided nuclear energy for charging e-cars. Fourteen years before Fukushima blew sky high, climate change science, aka the global warming scam, was started as a propaganda ploy by a nuclear industry intent on hijacking a large share of global energy revenues as a con game like climate alarmism. If I had not awakened to Al Gore's fakery at the Kyoto Summit and instead signed aboard with a public relations agency under a contract with TEPCO, for one thing I'd be a lot richer today since I couldn't get much poorer going after the nuclear mafia. Now you may say, show me the hard evidence or shut up. And fair enough, if you want smoke, I'll show you the fire in the barbecue pit. The Thunberg Airman Actors School, Greta's got talent. That's because her father, Savante Thunberg, 
and her paternal grandfather Olaf are stage and film actors and her mother Anne Magdalene Ehrman stars in the opera productions. What the mainstream media has not reported is about Greta's family is that their maternal grandfather Malania's dad Lars Emin is a retired chief financial officer CFO of Sandvik, a world leading tool maker that manufactures saws and drills for home carpentry and it also makes steel pipes for the nuclear power plants in a partnership with the French atomic energy giant Arriva. The Swedish manufacturer also produces drilling and tunneling and rock crushing equipment for the global uranium mining industry. Poof! And there just went the theory, leaving behind only a conspiracy of the corporate kind. Arriva is a major nuclear technology supplier for TEPCO, including the melted pipes at the self-destructed Fukushima No. 1 facility, which exploded and went up in flames of March 11 of 2011 and has been dumping radioactive water into the Pacific ever since. Following repeated failures by that time, the French supplier to install an effective water filtration system, Arriva also subcontracts hundreds of steel components to the global nuclear industry from the Nippon Steel Division, called Japan Casting and Foraging, whose defective crack riddle parts were largely responsible for the explosions and the fires that forced the shutdown of atomic power plants in France and other countries. Those Japanese quality assurance failures have opened a lucrative opportunity to Sandvik to exploit as a component supplier to nuclear plants worldwide. Therefore, in this post-Fukushima anti-nuclear climate, Sandvik has quietly teamed up with Arriva and Rio Tinto to push the climate change agenda to convince the governments worldwide to license more nuclear power plants, a marketing challenge adapted by the global public relations campaign by the Poisidou scientists. The UN Climate Change Conference and its crops of giant crazed climate scientists as detailed in a series of articles. Fukushima caused the northern ozone hole and other radioactive impacts on the environment and destroying the atmosphere and poisoning the oceans. Whereby the global warming is a cynical hoax to promote a renaissance for the nuclear energy cartel. The latest orders for Savvik's rock crushers are from a massive new open pit uranium mine of the Trikapuk site on the Rungo Mountain the richest wildlife area in Nambia. The former colony of the Kaiser German Empire is otherwise mostly windswept deserts. Therefore, an open pit uranium mine blowing off toxic dust will be another weapon of genocide ecocide against Africa, running parallel with Merck's vaccine campaign that has been spreading and pushing GMO Ebola in the Congo region. Question: So where are the environmentalists protesting Sandvik's anti-global warming project in Nambia? Answer, running tourism in Chernobyl to show how the deer are coming back and they're actually being imported from other places into the Chernobyl zone. Sandvik has also been strip mining uranium from Maliwa, the mine owner operator Lotus Hylea based in Australia, included among its major shareholders Rio Tinto, controlled by the Rothschilds Bank in London, Paris and Melbourne. Although nobody bothered to inform them about the cause and effect, Greta Thunberg and her younger sisters are the children of Chernobyl, whose mother, Anne Magdalena Molina, Omen, along with her classmates, went to school in the most radioactive contaminated region in Europe outside of Ukraine during the Chernobyl fallout crisis. How was it that Gavelberg country in eastern Sweden and near Finland experienced much greater amounts of fallout than the eastern European nations adjoining Ukraine other than Belarus? That's a distance of 1,270 kilometers from the meltdown. Well, let me explain. On that early morning of April 25, 1986, when the control rods jammed inside a reactor 4 during their emergency response at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, the prevailing wind's directions was northwesterly. The intense heat column rose to a high altitude. But when the plume reached the Baltic Sea, colder air temperature caused the particles to descend closer to the water surface. Continuing to move northward, the radioactive airstream entered into the Gulf of the Bothenia, an arm of the Baltic Sea that separates Sweden's east coast and Finland, and so the brunt of the Chernobyl fallout settled on the shores. Before the plume slammed into the backbone ridge of Norway, the source of the Sweden's rivers and streams. On that Friday late afternoon, Chernobyl fallout descended like invisible snowflakes on the students, playing in the schoolyard at San Viking. The site of Sandvik Steam Mill. The town was named after the family who owned that mill. 
the first ever to use the Bessemer continuous casting process. The fallout was dense enough to trigger alarms at the emergency monitoring station located inside of Fort Marks nuclear plant in Galberg County. A few kilometers up the road from the school indeed, Galvelberg was the first monitoring station to signal an alarm due to the official cover-up of the Soviet-run Chernobyl nuclear plant. In all statistical probability, schoolgirl Anne Margaret Ehrman, the 15-year-old daughter of the Sandvik CFO, suffered subsequent gene damage to her ovaries immediately following the most intense phase of the Chernobyl fallout, as indicated by the autism suffered by both of her daughters. The elder sister Greta, being born 16 years after the nuclear catastrophe by the late 1990s, local physicians pinpoint Chernobyl fallout as the direct cause of more than 250 cancer deaths in Gavelberg County, a patient case confirmation with a high probability of many more fatalities linked to the fallout. More than one third of the Swedish population has suffered cancer. The capital Stockholm, which is south of Gavelberg, was probably hit much harder by Chernobyl than reported during the official cover-up. The mortality estimates and national cancer rates from Chernobyl were obscured by two subsequent nuclear accidents at the Vattenfall leak from the Soviet Russian Lenin nuclear facility outside of Leningrad, St. Petersburg, natural background radioactivity from local Granite Hills, and fallout from the 2011 Fukushima meltdowns. Radioactivity has a cumulative effect on internal organs and DNA over an individual's lifetime. The Thunberg girls are affected by all the above radioactivity releases, compounded by nuclear contamination of the fresh water and the Baltic Sea Bothnia Gulf. So what we effectively have here is propaganda for dummies. Sweden has a grand total of two thermal power plants and one of these idled is in reserve. Even though the rest of the nation's electricity supports comes from nuclear hydro and wind turbines, global warming due to carbon dioxide emissions is the single issue popular cause for the Swedish population. Global warming is therefore a boogeyman, as dangerous as a troll from Scandinavian folklore. This is a classic case of propaganda as a diversionary exercise. After graduation, Melina Ehrman attended the Royal Music Academy in Stockholm, south of Gavelberg County. As a professional singer without much science education and being married to an actor, she probably failed to conduct the necessary inquiry into the most probable root cause of her daughter's brain disorders. Since her father Lars Ehrman, the retired CFO from the Nuclear Link Sandvik Corporation, has been the main breadwinner and treasurer of this brood. It should not be surprising if nuclear whitewashing Sandvik executives have influenced and provoked the Thunberg Airmen family to launch the highly theoretical Greta the Solar Hoax. The elements for ethical compromises are all there. In a small community, a corporate corporation, a clan of actors and performers who are readily directed to follow a script in exchange for payment. The reindeer slaughter for species survival. Have you heard of this story? These humans in their pride have thus fooled themselves into believing that ill-gotten wealth can help them evade mass destruction. Within a decade of the Chernobyl meltdowns, I was doing field research in Sweden, Finland, and northern Norway to assess the recovery efforts by the Samaya herders, who told me about the need to kill all their beloved domesticated reindeer and incinerate the bodies to prevent irreversible genetic damage to the gene pool. An entirely new herd was raised from frozen eggs reserved for such a crisis. Actually, it was for an anticipated nuclear war. It was amazing how the herding families of the newly generated reindeer revived the ancient cultural practices so rapidly. It was an example of hope against all odds, in defense of the biosphere. Human DNA is another matter. The underground field of eugenics is still operating in the top gear. Although under various guises like the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and in Sweden under the cover of the National Genomics Infrastructure, presumably Chernobyl and the other fallout events have left deep fingerprints on molecular research on Swedish DNA, which is predominantly the H1, H2, and H6 haplotypes. Parkinson's disease became far more widespread following the atmospheric atomic bomb testing in the 1960s, indicating radioactivity as a trigger and probable cause of nerve disorders and psychological symptoms associated with Parkinson's. Thus, the recurrent radioactive exposed Swedish population requires crossbreeding to prevent a population collapse. That's probably why you see the increase of migration to those Nordic countries. The humanitarian, political, and medical dishonesty about eugenics policy in Scandinavia makes the Nazis seem like Girl Scouts. 
The hard lesson is clear. We must never allow the threat of nuclear cause extinction to dominate again, and that we have repeatedly failed with the Fukushima crisis and to prevent the revival of the demonic nuclear industry. Life is more important than their profits. This is a civil war for human survival. The Stockholm Syndrome As put by Kali Ren, you're nothing, but not to me. As stressed in the Star Wars series, the most thrilling challenge for Evil Inc. is to turn resistant victims into its willing agents through flattery and harping on personal shame. Whatever goodness may be left in the targeted individual serves to more easily convert and corrupt others caught in the same predicament. Deception of the individual is the only means for the group to achieve a semblance of normality and dignity. God save us from this good impressions. In all probability, her family members have convinced themselves into believing that they are protected and helping little Greta by making her an icon of the climate change movement. They view their sneaky campaign as patriotism toward the nation at risk. Yet in blunt terms, her worst enemies are the nuclear power industry, Sandvik, her corporate lackey grandfather Lars, and her dishonest parents. The Thunberg Ehrman family are the cruelest type of self-serving monsters, doing everything for the good of the children by exploiting this innocent child and renting her out to the nuclear demon that has deprived her of her childhood and now relegates her to a confused infamy as the Patty Hearst of the climate change movement. Sure, I am uncomfortable for having to disclose all this to you as to what's really been happening. Although it hurts, the truth will set you free. Greta, be yourself. That's all that really matters. As for your family exploiters, their hearts will be broken after the illusions are shattered. But it's their own fault and none of yours. Stop being their complicit captive. Truth is the most painful experience you will ever have to endure, but only that will make you free. The correct diagnosis for your psychological issues is called the Stockholm Syndrome. When you as their captive start to adapt the mindset of your captors, and defend their self-interest. No, you do not belong to them or with them. Your only responsibility is to reject subjugation and denial by striving for freedom to think for yourself and be yourself because you owe it to yourself and to the world to become what you really are meant to be. As for the Parkinson's aka toxic radioactivity, death is nothing to be afraid because your worst fear is a comfortable life of delusion, escape. To see is to be. Before signing off, Greta, you might be wondering how is it that I can understand your predicament and can see through the veils of all the lies. It is because like you, I was a victim of radioactivity at the very inception as the embryo that would become a child in formation. My mother was aboard the last train out of Hiroshima, joining the passengers who saw the brilliant flash of light that destroyed a city and irritated the people abroad, including the girl who became my mom. Remember always, catastrophe robs you of a normal life, but that it also grants you special powers to see things as they are, which few others can see. Your eyes can perceive the tiny stars dancing in the air, but it's not that type of gas you assume there to be, because like me you can see, you can feel and taste that invisible yet most powerful force in our universe, the cosmic energy that condenses into atoms. Those flickering sparks had edited the genes of thousands of biological strains that eventually resulted in the creation of ours. And yet this energy has also annihilated countless species without mercy, just as it's now eliminating millions of humans and billions of other life forms. That's what has been bothering you, the evasive thoughts and selfish urges that have abated this paranoia of annihilation. By a quirk of fate, you were spared the demise of other Chernobyl babies, to stand witness and warn the others who cannot see or feel what you were able to perceive. I will be gone sooner than later, but you will still be here to watch over and warn against the self-destructive mania and foolish pride. So drop those fetters from your wrists and the blindfold from your eyes, so that you can truly be free to be awakened humanity and all living creatures on this rarest garden and planet tumbling through a vast universe they would otherwise never know the true meaning of love. This was written by Yoichi Shimatsu. You can find him on the Rents Network. I'm going to be leaving links down in the description. He truly has a 
pulse for what the nuclear industry is doing. And because of his illness that was brought on from Hiroshima fallout, he's able to see things like this. And I've seen that people have, have been affected by radioactivity, that they know bullshit when they see it. Listen to them. Learn from them. Thanks for paying attention, and have a blessed day.